Hi, this is Needlepointers.com. Today I'd like to show you how to make these decoupage glass tea light holders that are great to use as a table decoration or a decoration around your house. I have two kinds here. The two on the outside are decorated in a fall theme and would be great for on a Thanksgiving table or for Halloween. The two in the center are decorated for Christmas as the one on the left is with a snowman and it has a Santa Claus. The one on the right has poinsettias. So keep watching to find out how to make these fabulous tea light candle holders for the holidays and kids would love to create these. As always, click on the link in the description of the video or in the iCard to see more photos of this project in a full written photo tutorial. What you will need for this craft is some glassware. Now I have some big, bigger things and smaller items. It will depend on your paper napkins and the design that you would like to decoupage onto your glassware on what kind of glassware you want to use. So these are several different sizes that I have and you can see this one I decoupaged on this paper napkin that has fall leaves on it. And this one does not have any glitter on it. This is similar version but it has glitter. You can see the glitter sparkling hopefully. So what else you need is paper napkins, decorative ones that you can find at the dollar store. Also we found these at the dollar store for a dollar each and they had several different types of glassware there that would have been appropriate for this type of project. So check out your dollar store for the supplies for this project. I found these cute napkins for Christmas or winter themed. And these poinsettia napkins and then like I showed you before the fall leaves which is good for you know uh, like Halloween or Thanksgiving. You'll, you might want a little tea light. You may want some glitter. You'll definitely need Mod Podge which is the glue we use to apply the paper napkins onto the glassware. A bowl, if your decoupage is in a big container, you might want a bowl to put it some in. A foam brush of some sort, a pair of scissors to cut out your paper napkins, and some wet paper towel, and maybe some dry paper towels. You also want something to protect your work surface. Okay, so I'm going to show you in this video how I'm going to decoupage these poinsettias onto this smaller container and then a little bit later I will show you how I'm going to decoupage the larger in, larger things from these napkins onto this taller jar. So the first step is unfold your paper napkin and then using your scissors you can cut around the items on the paper napkin and cut them out. You might need a few napkins to decoupage onto one item and don't worry you know you're gonna overlap them some and everything so I just rough cut around the different items. A lot of times smaller pieces are a little easier to decoupage especially if you have a smaller like uh, piece of glassware like I this have. one's not so is not really huge so using smaller pieces will make it a little bit easier to decoupage and get them more flat when I do, when I do them so so to start out I have these four that I cut out next so in order to decoupage on you want to make sure your glassware is clean first before you start the project so you might need to wash it and then have some decoupage or mod podge in your um, bowl 
using your brush, paint it on in a thin coat in a section of your glassware. And try to make it a thin, even coat. It doesn't have to be real thick. Then take your paper napkin and lay it on. And smooth it out. So I'm trying to keep it as smooth as I can, but because it has corners, it's going to, it's not going to be able to be completely smooth. But it still looks good, don't worry. And the wet paper towel is good for getting the Mod Podge off your fingers as you go along. So once you have the piece on there, you can put a thin layer over top. Now be careful when you're doing it because you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to rip the paper napkin. And I try not to put it on the bottom of the item. If you do put it on the bottom then you might need to dry it with the top down or something so that it doesn't stick to your surface when, you, when it's dry. So there I have the first piece on and I'll just continue around the base and start with doing all of the around the base. Adding on some more decoupage in the next section. And we do want them to overlap a little bit. So there's the second piece on there. You can see there is some little creases here, but when I put the decoupage on, they'll still be there, but they won't they'll still look fine and afterwards. And there's the second piece with the decoupage over top. So now I have paper napkins applied all the way around the bottom and I'm going to cut out other pieces and apply them all the way up to the rim of this one. I'll be back after I've done all that. So I'm about to add my last piece on here. As you can see I have it mostly covered Just have this one section that wasn't still not covered. So I'll put some decoupage over top of this last piece. And then I've been smoothing it out a little bit to try to smooth out the little wrinkles that happen. And as I'm working with this, I can see that the the red points that he has seemed to show up pretty well. The white ones kind of are a little muted in this design. So after it dries, this all dries clear. So I'll see how it looks after it dries. And if I don't like the look of the white poinsettias, I can always put another layer over top with putting down some more decoupage and then put another piece of paper napkin over top and decoupage over top of it to change it. So if you find you don't like exactly how you did it in the beginning, you know, you can always go back and keep adding more and make sure that you've put the decoupage over top of everything, the whole thing, after you get the paper napkins on and then leave it sit to dry. Usually it can dry in about 20 minutes, uh, depending on how thick you put it on there. Once it's dried, then you might be able to see that you, maybe you missed a spot and you can always add some, add another piece later to cover that spot, or you could leave it uncovered. Oh, and I forgot to say, I used pieces of three paper napkins to cover this. Now, depending on your how big your piece is, you may need more paper napkins or you know, even less. So as I was placing this down, I know I put my finger on the side. And when I pulled it away, I pulled away part of the paper napkin in this one area. So, you know, all is not lost. I can just decoupage something else on top of that section to cover it up. My mistake. So be careful when you're putting it down or you're touching it that your finger doesn't stick too much and pull up the paper napkin. For this taller container, I am going to decoupage on these Santas from the Santa napkin 
and also the salmon. I'm going to put them all, them, both things on one <laughs> item and alternate them. So I've added a bunch of glue of the decoupage on there and carefully placing snowmen. I'm trying to smooth out the main part of the snowman so he won't have any wrinkles in him. And the other parts I'm not as worried about. So there you can see. And like always, I'm going to paint, put the Mod Podge over top to seal it in there. So I will continue with this one in the similar manner, filling in all the way around. Alright, so, so far I have one full picture of the snowman, one full picture of Santa, and then I have a smaller cutout picture of the snowman, and that fills in the around the whole jar. So next I will cut smaller pieces of the background and put it in, fill it in around to the top. So like I have a couple pieces I cut out already. I will add this in between the two snowmen here. So I'm going to keep working on filling in the other sections here and I'll be back in a little bit. Oh, there we go. I have it all decoupage pretty close to the top. And I will let both of these projects dry and be back in a little bit. Alright, so these have been drying for quite a while, maybe over an hour. And I can see this one is mostly dry. There's still some white spots where it's not fully dry. But it's dry enough now that I can stick the, I can put the glitter on. So once you get to the point, and if you've decided to put glitter on your project, the, it's very simple. I put some glitter into a bowl, and then I'm going to hold my project over top of the glitter bowl so that the extra glitter will always drop back down into the bowl. And that helps conserve the glitter. And to put, add the glitter, we just put a thin coat of Mod Podge on again. Okay, so I have a thin layer of Mod Podge across the entire project. And depending on the container for your glitter, you can pour it into the bowl and then sprinkle it on, or you could sprinkle it directly from the container. And you can add pretty much as little or as much glitter as you desire. And we're holding it over the bowl so that it catch it. Any extra glitter can fall down into the bowl and be caught and we can put it back into the glitter container and reuse it. it seems that sprinkling it on from this container seems to be working the best for me. You can tap it down with your finger to help it adhere better. So there's my project with the glitter on it. So once you've gotten the glitter on there enough, then you can always tap it over the, the bowl again to shake any loose glitter off. If you notice, the glitter does mute the design some. So if you want the design to stand out more, then I recommend either adding glitter to only certain sections of it or very sparingly throughout, or just leave it plain without the glitter. So I'm back and I finished both of my projects here. So here's the one. And I like how this turned out and the glitter looks nice on it. Adds a little extra to it. And on this one, I decided to just put the glitter in like the sky portions 
around the different the snowmen and the Santa Claus because I thought that it would mute out too much the actual snowmen and Santa Claus if I put the glitter on top. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these glass tea light candle holders. Please click the link in the description of this video to go to our website needlepointers.com for lots of other decoupage crafts and other fun crafts for kids. Also, while you're there, don't forget to sign up for our free we weekly newsletter to keep up with the new projects and pages we have on our website. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. I hope you enjoy your holidays and we'll see you in another video soon.